Professor Sir John, two of the, the questions that often get asked as it relates to this vaccine, uh, whether it's from the FDA or, or here in the US or around the world, one was that Monsef Slary today, for example, said there weren't enough old people enrolled in, in your trial. The other one was, was questions as to, to whether it's totally safe. Uh, there was cases of transverse myelitis and, and multiple sclerosis uh, uh, during the trial. Can, can you address those two concerns? Yeah, so I'll start with the latter one. The, 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 there was a massive safety database with this study. Um, I think 75,000 patient months of safety data. Uh, there, there were some events, um, and indeed, um, there were a number of events. Many of them occurred in the control group. There was really only one that occurred in the treatment group that uh, caused a, a pause in the study and where we looked and evaluated it carefully. And the Data Monitoring and Safety Committee went through the, all the appropriate uh, hoops to make sure that there was no evidence that it was causally related to the vaccine and gave it a clean bill of health. And that went, then went back to the regulators here that allowed us to proceed with the trial. So in fact, the level of trouble here is is very, very low indeed. There's, there's really very little uh, um, adverse effect uh, risk with this vaccine. I'm still trying to figure out why, this, why a two-dose shot would be approved by regulators, Sir John, if the one dose turned out to be much more effective and why it's sort of so confusing who gets how many doses and what the efficacy rates are because there's a big gap there. Were you, were you able to figure that out? Yeah, so the, 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 it, it, the, F, the, F, the efficacy which the um, MHRA has um, uh, approved on is a 70% efficacy, which is the same as the efficacy you get after a single dose. But it's important to remember that there are other characteristics of vaccines which are equally important as the top line news on a press release. And, and, and one of those is durability the ability to create the best possible antibody response that's likely to last longer. And what we know from immunology is that a single dose can often produce levels of antibodies that will protect you in the short term, but they wane after a relatively moderate length of time. High quality antibodies come from a boost, and that's both high quality antibodies and also the generation of a group of cells called memory B cells which is the way your body recognizes the infection the next time it comes along. So, so the crucial thing about the second dose is about durability and the nature of that immune response over time. And it because it's very important to have that second dose. Uh, Professor Sir John, clearly there's been a lot of headlines uh, over the last three weeks or so about this new strain of the virus uh, reached Colorado, in fact, uh, yesterday. Do you think the vaccine will protect against that? Yeah, so that's, that's the, of course, the $64,000 question. I, I, we're looking, obviously, actively because we've got all the um, samples taken from people who've been vaccinated, and we can check to see if those antibodies, the antibodies we've generated with the vaccines, can actually neutralize the new strain of the virus, and those experiments are going on right now. We think they probably can, um, but... Uh, we just want to be absolutely sure. We'll also, of course, be, given the level of disease in the UK with the new variant, which is now reaching 70 or 80 percent of all the disease in London, for example, um, we're going to have lots of examples of people who've had the vaccine who get exposed to the virus. And we'll be able to tell pretty quickly about whether the vaccine is indeed protective against that strain. I think a slightly more worrying strain is the South African strain, again, spreading very quickly in South Africa. And it has, it's got some rather um, chunkier looking mutations that really do change the, the, the electrostatic nature of the receptor binding domain, which will mean it's going to be pretty hard for neutralizing antibodies to bind to those new domains. So I think, look, this is going to be a uh, a game of cat and mouse now uh, ongoing. Uh, if we have to make new vaccines, we can make them now that we've done the initial work. I'm sure our friends with the RNA vaccines can do the same. So I think, you know, we, we're ready if we need to make uh, another, uh, another vaccine to approach it. And just to be clear, I doubt that will require the full clinical trial. 
-hmm. protocol. It'll probably involve immunogenicity studies and then um, be able to be approved after that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.